did in 2016. 2020, we did better than 2016. But they say, we want to run against Trump. In the meantime, they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to find just a single word, a sentence, anything to prosecute Trump because they don't want to run against me. That's what they say. We want to run against Trump. We'll do anything to run against Trump. Uh, they have the greatest line of bullshit of any group of people <laughs> I've ever seen. Want to run against Trump. It's local. Oh, we had nothing to do. But the top guy was put in that office to help prosecute Trump. How would you like to have my life? Would anybody like my life? But I still like it. But they want to try and find anything they can when they've already been exonerated. I've been exonerated many times. You take a look at what this been. I mean, time after time. But all of this is happening for one single reason. They know that when we return to power, we will bring their lies and their corruption and their disinformation tumbling down. Our getting back in the White House is their worst nightmare, but it is our country's only hope. It's our only hope. If we don't get back now, this country can't take it. Even the two years, and now, fortunately, it's less than that. It's hard to believe it's less. We used to say four years. A lot of people said, well, sir, the election was so bad. You'll be in, in one year. A lot of people in this room, you'll be back in six weeks, sir. But it's a bad system in many ways, very bad, very dangerous system. But nobody else can do it but us. In recent weeks, I've been laying out a bold, detailed agenda for how we're going to complete this mission in our next term. I do weekly statements, and people are liking them. Today, I want to go through some of our big plans that I will do as the 47th President of the United States. Thank you. At the top of my list, we'll be stopping the slide into costly and never-ending wars. We've got to stop it. Can't keep spending hundreds of billions of dollars protecting people that don't even like us. Now, you know, in business, if you did that, what you do is you put up the money and then you say, but listen, we own half your country in case you win. You know, you take a piece of the upside, right? We get nothing. In fact, the opposite. We put up the money, and then after it's finished, assuming it's successful, let's say it's successful, they don't want to even talk to us. No, nope, you have nothing to do with us. Get out of here. You have nothing. No, no. In business, you put up money, seed money, call it whatever you want. You end up owning the country by the time it's over. And the only reason they're doing well is we're giving them the greatest equipment that I bought, the greatest equipment <laughs> ever made. And the only reason they're doing well with NATO is I raised $440 billion from countries that weren't paying anything. And the Secretary General Stoltenberg, a good man, he said it's one of the greatest jobs I've ever seen. I hope he still says that, but uh, one of the greatest jobs. He said Obama would come and make a speech. Bush would come, make a speech, and then they'd leave. I came, I looked, I said, man, these people aren't paying. We're paying for the whole thing, practically. Of the 28 countries at the time, only eight were paid up. 20 weren't, including Germany. They paid a fraction of what they were supposed to be paying. And I said to him, either you pay, or we're not going to protect you. And a man stood up, a president of a country stood up, and he said, sir, could I ask you a question? This was around table with nobody in the room but the presidents, prime ministers, and dictators, okay? Some of them are all the same. But they stood up, and he stood up and said, sir, could I ask you a question? Uh, if we don't pay up, 
And if we get attacked by Russia, will you protect us, sir? I said, no, you're not paid up, right? That's right. You're delinquent, right? Yes. I will not protect you from Russia. <laughs> sir, we'll send you a check tomorrow, sir. We'll send you a check tomorrow. It will be sent by overnight mail, sir. I promise you'll have it tomorrow. Now, have I said, like the stupid politicians say, absolutely will be, you know, Article 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, what well, you're supposed to do it. But those articles all suppose that you're supposed to be paid up. But let's say I said the opposite. Let's, yes, we will always protect you. And I took a lot of heat because they said, I'm not a good member. Actually, NATO wouldn't even exist if I didn't get them to pay up. But they paid up $449 billion or something. And that's the money they use. They're rich as hell right now. They spent an office building that cost $3 billion. It's like a skyscraper in Manhattan laid on its side. It's one of the longest buildings I've ever seen. And I said, you should have, instead of spending $3 billion, you should have spent $500 million building the greatest bunker you've ever seen. Because Russia didn't, wouldn't even need an airplane attack. One tank, one shot through that beautiful glass building in its sky. Same architect I used in Chicago, great architects, but they didn't have war in mind. But when things happened, that building would be gone in about 15 minutes. They should have spent a $500 million bunker, nice thick ceiling, six inches, six feet of concrete. And by the way, we have a great gentleman. Speaking of China, will you please stand up? Gordon, stand up, please. Gordon Chow. You know, I'm talking a lot about China, and I'm looking over, I'm saying him, and I'm just studying his face as I'm speaking, because people do like me to go off script a little bit, right? It's a little bit more risky, but it's more exciting. And I'm looking at Gordon, and I'm saying, you know, I hope he agrees with what I'm saying, but basically I'm saying exactly what you say. They're not out for our good, are they? They're not out for our good. And nobody ever taxed them like I did, and nobody ever took any money in like I did. $440 billion. We took, in, we took in so much money from China. It's so incredible. So I just, it's an honor to have you here. Really, it is. I agree with almost everything you said. Almost everything. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Great job, both of you. I was the only president in decades that didn't have a war. But I completed wars that were already started, including defeating 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate. 100%. I was also the only president where Russia didn't take over a country during my term. Russia took over not because I got along with Vladimir Putin very well. I said, Vladimir, don't do it. You know, you and I are friends. Don't take over any countries because, you know, Moscow will be hit very hard. I told him things. He probably didn't believe it, but you know what? He believed it 10 percent. And President Xi believed it when I talked about Beijing. He do anything. It's true. It's true. You have no idea. These conversations, I wish they could have been recorded, actually. People would think a lot of me. But with Bush, they invaded Georgia, right? With Obama, they took Crimea. With Biden, they're trying to take everything. And he won't even know they took it. True. Sure. 